By the end of the 19th century, drawings had been made to appear to move, but only in a limited way. Progress was again waiting on invention. And this came with the development of the motion picture film and the motion picture camera. This new medium opened the door to further experiments with the animated drawing. In the year 1906, J. Stuart Blackton made a short film novelty called Humorous Phases of Funny Faces. The drawings were made with chalk on a blackboard. The movement was affected by erasing and redrawing parts of the figures. Stop motion photography created the action. Windsor McKay, the famous newspaper cartoonist, made several noteworthy experiments with animation. Among them was his film, Gertie the Dinosaur. Gertie was not presented in the way modern films are shown today. It was part of a vaudeville act in which Windsor McKay appeared on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Gertie the Dinosaur. I will speak to Gertie, and she will do everything that I ask her to. Come on, Gertie. Come on out and take a pretty bow. That's a good girl. Now come on up front here. Bow to the audience, Gertie. Stop that nonsense. Let's get on with the act. Now, will you be a good girl and make your bow to the audience? Okay, okay. That's enough. Don't overdo it. Now, raise your right foot. Come on, Gertie. That's good. Now, raise your left foot. Your left foot, Gertie. Your left foot. Never mind that sea monster. Your left foot. Come on, Gertie. Now stop acting like a dim-witted dinosaur. Take it easy, Gertie. You're a bad girl. All right. Now stop that crying. Here. Here's a nice pumpkin for you. Good, huh? Now will you raise your left foot? Thank you. My, you have an appetite today. Aren't you afraid you'll spoil your figure? Well, let's get on with the act. Good. Goody, pay attention. Oh, it's Jumbo. Now, Goody, don't hurt Jumbo. He's just trying to be friendly. Aren't you ashamed? Well, folks, that's how dinosaurs are. Unpredictable. But she does have her gentler side. As a matter of fact, she's a student of the dance. And if the orchestra will play a tune, she'll perform for you. Right on her feet, isn't she? Oh, by the way, this is the latest dance. The dinosaur dip. Now, Gertie, you had that coming to you. Now, roll over and play dead. That's fine. Now get up. Come on, get up. Let's get on with the act. Up. Up on your feet. Hey, Gertie, look at that four-winged lizard. Do 
Did you see that? You're not in the habit of saying things, are you? How'd you like to have a little drink? Huh? Well, there's the lake. Go on. Take a little drink. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Gertie will show you that she's not afraid of me. And take me for a ride. Alley up. Windsor McKay's Gertie and other animation novelties stimulated a great public interest and created a demand for this new medium. This, in turn, encouraged other pioneers to creative efforts that, in time, led to the establishment of the animated cartoon as an industry. One of the pioneers, J.R. Bray, invented the basic patents for animated cartoon production. For a time, the Bray Studios were practically the creative center of the industry. His Colonel He's a Liar was the first animated cartoon character to appear in a series of films. And there was Raoul Barry, Canadian artist and painter. Among the many cartoon characters he created was Silas Bumpkin, who appeared in his early film series called The Grouch Chasers. This is Earl Hurd, who invented an improvement valuable in speeding up production of animated cartoons. His pioneer film effort was the Bobby Bump series. And there was Pat Sullivan's cartoon character, Felix the Cat. This characteristic walk, animated by Sullivan's collaborator, Otto Mesmer, became a laugh-provoking trademark. These then are some of the pioneers who led the way. By the mid-1920s, the animated cartoon industry was flourishing. This was the era of the silent screen. And although pictures were made without sound, they were seldom shown in silence. Music played a vital part in their presentation. Here is Oliver Wallace, who in 1910 was the first to accompany silent pictures on the theater organ. Today, he is still creating music for pictures as one of our staff composers. Through the magic of makeup, we'll try to take him back to the days of the silent pictures. It's coming, but we need to take off about 10 more years. 10? Can't you take off at least 15? Yes, I'm just the thing here to do it. Oh, why didn't somebody tell me about these things? That's about right, but there's still something missing. Oh, well, I've forgotten about those, you know. Thank you. How's that? Now that we've taken Oliver Wallace back to the period, he will demonstrate how the theater organ was used to create the music and sound effects for silent pictures. Are you ready, Ollie? All right, quiet, everybody. Roll them. The picture is by another pioneer of the industry, Max Fleischer. An innovation of his films was the combination of human and cartoon characters. Max Fleischer himself appeared in these pictures with Coco the Clown. <laughs> 